Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. Now, this over here is a Ryzen 4000 series processor. In fact, this is a Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G processor. It's an 8-core processor and it has a graphics card built into the processor. And this is the world's most powerful APU, which is a graphics card and a processor both in the same unit. Let's talk about it. PDF Element by Wondershare is a powerful PDF editing software. Have you ever needed to sign, edit or change something on a PDF document? This is probably one of the easiest way of doing it. Here's some of the powerful features of the program. First of all, editing PDF files. Whether you want to add watermarks, texts, paragraph, images, objects, pages, etc. Also, converting PDFs from and to any other popular file formats like Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, text, images, HTML, RTF, etc. You can also transform scanned PDFs or image-based PDFs into selectable, searchable and editable texts. And with PDF Element, you can easily edit PDFs in batch process. The program is simple to use and works on all devices, Windows, Mac, as well as iOS and Android. Check out the link in the description below and get yourself a 50% discount. So before I get some very angry comments, let's address the world's most powerful. Okay, because when you say these things, there's always someone who thinks, oh, wait, 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 or there's like an offense coming on or whatever. So basically this Ryzen 7 Pro is the world's most powerful iGPU is inside that processor. So basically it's more powerful than the Intel i9-9900K or 10900K, which both have the same processor inside there. If you want to see like that video about gaming performances on things, then just click on, on the link below or in the corner over there where this guy is talking about it because I'm not doing the game reviews. He's going to talk about it if you're interested in that. Just to quickly sum up that video, basically the iGPU that's in the 10900K and compared to this one over here, this one can run you some games without any dedicated graphics card, whereas the Intel 10 900K or 900K, 9900K, sorry, can't do that. This is the third video about these Ryzen 4000 series processors. We have the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3 over here, which have been already released. So please do check out that video over there. So I'm going to put these on the side to put the focus on this processor over here. Now, how does it compare to some of the other processors out there, like the Ryzen 7 3700X or 2700X or 3800X. We're gonna look into that in a moment. First of all, if you wanna see me do the test bench and how we tested these and how the test bench setup and all that was, then there's a video out there as well. So, you know, I recommend you check out if you're interested in that type of thing or just a bit nerdy. I do wanna say thank you for Team Group for sending out these awesome looking uh, DDR4 RAM, this is 3600 megahertz. This is also compatible with AMD, you know, some of the RAM isn't, but this one definitely is. It's tested with AMD and it's a fantastic RAM. So if you wanna check it out, I'll leave the link in the description below. I'm a big fan of completely black over here, which these are over here. Can I say over here one more time? Over here, over here, over here, over here. So if you're not familiar with this processor, you can not buy this off the shelf. This is not a retail unit. When AMD launched the 4000 series uh, CPUs, it wasn't very popular because this is not like for people like me. The Ryzen 4000 series were released basically for the already built systems when you buy them from like companies like Dell, HP and you know loads of other makes that just give you like the package. And most of the time if you want this processor you have to buy like the complete built system. Whereas I was able to buy some uh, very interestingly off the shelf and the retail packaging is not what you expect from Ryzen 9. It is like that, like a random box with a Wraith Stealth cooler inside and this processor just taped on top of the box and that is what you get. Now, when I got these processors, I was looking around like, wait a second, where can you buy them? And they were 
on sale nowhere. But then I found one article that mentioned two shops in the world that sell them. One of them was, I think, in Australia or New Zealand. And the other one was in my home country in Estonia. So I sent my dad a message said, Dad, could you do me a favor? Can you please go to that shop and buy these processors? I promise you I will pay you back. But these are very, very rare. Can you please buy them? Because I want to make videos about these on, on this channel. So here we are about two months later. It took that long because like the RAM and other bits like the test bench and loads of things were just you know delayed back shipping because of the pandemic that's going on in, around the world but finally we have this and i wanted to be like one of the first ones who give you benchmarks and tests in uh, on youtube but there you go there's some other guys who probably videos about a month ago let's talk about it what are the specs of this processor over here so it's a renoir processor which uh, is based on the Zen 2 architecture, which is basically Ryzen 3000 series and 7 nanometer transistors inside. There's an 8 cores and 16 threads. The base clock is lower than the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3, which is 3.6 gigahertz. On these is 3.7 and 3.8, but the boost clock for this processor is 4.4 gigahertz. Inside here, there is a Vega iGPU, Radeon Vega iGPU with eight graphics cores. So basically it goes like six, seven and eight. That's how they've named them. But the also graphics frequency is different. This one over here is 2100 megahertz instead of 1900 and 1700 over here. The cache for this processor is exactly the same as on the Ryzen 5, which is eight megabytes, which is a bit odd because if you look at the 3700X or 3800X, we have 36 megabytes, which is eight times the amount. The PCI generation is 3.0, so no PCI 4.0. If you want them ridiculous speeds, you can't have them on these processors. And there's only 12 PCIe lanes. The memory is DDR4, like always, and the maximum memory is 64 gigabytes compared to the retail processors, which are, you know, 3700X or 3800X, they are all capped at 128 gigabytes maximum memory. This one is 64. The max memory supported speed is 3200 megahertz, the same as all of these processors across. I tested it with these two sticks, actually there's four sticks I tested it with, and they are 3600 megahertz and it worked perfectly fine. Whether this processor supports EC support or not is a little bit questionable. I don't know, some sites say yes, some site no. It goes on the AM4 socket, so there's a lot of motherboard compatibility and different generations of processors that are still on the same socket which is fantastic the tdp is the same as all of these across which is 65 watts but i managed to see 88 watts being pulled from the processor which reaches to the 90 watt tdp the processor can be overclocked so let's have a look at some of the benchmarks according to some of the other processors out there and how does it actually compare and some of the pricing and should we buy in this or not so we're comparing this processor to the previous generation of a Ryzen processors, which is 2700X, right? We have eight cores across the board over here. We have a Ryzen 2700X, this 4750G. We have a Ryzen 3700X, 3800X, and we have a Mac Pro, which has the Intel Z and eight core processor. So let's have a look at how does it compare to all of these across the board. And as you can see, our process over here is slightly slower than the 3700X and a bit more slower than the 3800X processors. But in terms of the single core performance, we can see that this 4750G is basically the same as 3700 X, but multi-core performance, obviously we're dropping a little bit because probably the cache is so much lower than on the 3700X that it just has more room to work over there. And the 3800X as well, like 300 points difference over there compared to Ryzen 4750G. But looking across the benchmarks over here, I think it's interesting to see that, look, on the Mac Pro benchmark, we are actually beating the Mac Pro quite a bit, about a thousand points, which is just unbelievable, all right? So if you're looking at like rendering performance, then you can get a fantastic processor over here, which is half the price of the Mac Pro Xeon processor that's inside the Mac Pro, but performs 
better than that one on single core it will be better as well than this one you'll see in the geekbench core then we have single core as well but even on the cinebench it will be better on single core as well i just couldn't find the mac pro single core performance so let's move on to the geekbench 5 then geekbench 5 which is more like a more universal and tests different parts of and different kind of applications and different kind of sections of the CPU and testing how well does it perform. And now, interestingly, we have the 3700X, which is a little bit slower than this 4750G in single core and in multi core, both of them. But the Ryzen 3800X is better about a thousand points on the multi core and about 150 points on the single core scores. Now, look at the Mac Pro scores over there. We're beating the multi-core and single core performance, which is unbelievable that you can have a processor like this beating something that big. So obviously, you know, I know that that processor inside the Mac Pro is meant for different things and it's meant for that, but it, I think it's still interesting that, uh, you know, Apple offers such processor as a base model for £6,000 Mac Pro. They should at least get £500 off on the base model because that's just ridiculous to offer something like that. Interestingly, let's have a look at the pricing over here and how does it like compare or where does it slot in? You can see that our processor is probably somewhere between £300 and £350, which is more expensive than the 3700X and 3800X. So if you get it for 300 pounds, let's say 320 pounds, then the 3700X is 25 pounds cheaper. But for 25 pounds, you need a GPU to get that processor working, which this guy already has built in. And it's not that bad, but obviously it's miles more expensive or almost double the price as the 2700X, but it is much better than the 2700X as well when doing the benchmarks I also kept an eye on the temps and how does the temps work and how high does it go and you know would this wraith stealth cooler be actually able to cool it down because if you know what cooler the 3700x or 3800x come then they come with much beefier cooler than than this obviously their tdp is a 95 as well which is much higher than this one but still gpu and cpu inside and such a basic cooler will it be able to keep up and the answer is yes absolutely basically these are a bit modified laptop processors for the desktop because they came out for laptops first the 4000 series ryzen processors were laptops first i think it's just interesting thing to note on the temps i'm seeing like max temps about 60 65 so and that is like strenuous benchmarking like test after test after test after test or letting the blender run for like two hours in a row and then seeing that is the max temp cooler that comes with it is easily able to keep up with that. So let's move on to the Premiere Pro benchmarks, which is more like real world application and seeing how does it perform in real world. Eight cores, 16 threads. Is it much better than the Ryzen 5 and 3 on the 4000 series or not? So Premiere Pro benchmarks over here. On this process as well, as you can see on the Ryzen 3 and 5, you can easily edit like mirrorless camera footage, which I had tested this A7S II footage which is 4K H.264 codec, 10-bit 422, 25 frames per second. And when selecting full resolution playback, pressing play, we are dropping zero frames on the clip. It's interesting to see how different processors work with different playback speeds of different codecs because as you can see this 6k b-raw footage this process is doing a bit worse than the ryzen 5 which is a six core processor now i'm not sure why is that reason is it the glock speeds is it something else i'm not sure but we are dropping a little bit more frames on the 6k when playing back one times 6k b-raw 24 frames per second and we're dropping 2.3 frames that is an average across different tests when putting two b-raw clips together and playing them at the same time, we are dropping even more than the Ryzen 5. We're dropping 118 frames, which is a bit interesting, seeing that the Ryzen 5 is doing better at that area. But now when we're playing back three of these clips, then our processor does a much better job and drops 127 frames per second. As you can see, 4K Red Raw 24 frames per second is quite good. Playback 18.3 frames dropped which is not bad for a full resolution playback, but 8K Red Raw playback is as bad. It's dropping a bit less frames than the previous processors, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen uh, 3, 
but it's still 134 so don't expect that to play back very very well but we can see that the more threads and more cores is probably helping this process a bit more to play back that for 8k footage now in terms of the rendering performance that is quite a bit better than the previous processes which performed weirdly enough identically to each other rendering that black back whether it's six or four cores but this eight core we are rendering that two minute test clip at four minutes and seven seconds so the question is can you actually use this processor without a dedicated graphics card to edit your footage and the answer is yes and quite well actually now testing some of the premiere pro playback and how does the all operating system and just using it for everyday things it is snappy it works really well it is very powerful and honestly very very fast who would want this processor if there is someone who wants a processor for very small form factor builds like i mentioned on the previous videos then this is a perfect one for you especially you gamers who want like a very very small like a palm size pc mini itx build on your desktop with with this process inside without a dedicated graphics card and you can do a fair bit of gaming now it is not rdna2 graphics inside there it's still the vega graphics which are a little bit outdated so bear that in mind but it is still the best what anyone can offer you at the moment in the market of a desktop full-size desktop processors should you be buying this or not i think personally it's a very interesting process and a very interesting buy because if you want a build that has a lot of future potential and maybe you don't want to cash out a lot of money in the goal but want to start working then this is a perfect processor for you because it's basically performing very identically to the 3700x so later on when you pair a dedicated graphics card with this one you can get a similar performance out from this processor compared to the 3700x and you still have an iGPU that can be utilized for different things, you know, whether it's GPU effects or whatever. So you have basically two graphics cards whenever pairing this with a dedicated graphics card. And if you want to stay in the AM4 socket, which has, you know, now Ryzen 5000 series CPUs as well, um, then this could be a very interesting product to buy because you can buy this one and then later on upgrade to Ryzen 5000 series with a dedicated GPU but until then you can get this one with quite decent performance and then get away with it. The only downside is it's quite hard to get hand of and very hard to buy because you have to go on eBay and there's no warranties and things like that. It only comes mostly in the systems, but I'll be selling mine soon because once I've done the tested, um, I don't necessarily need that. It would be interesting to do that in the future tests, but for now I don't need them. So if you're interested in that in the UK, message me or you know stay in tune on either eBay or Facebook market or something like that. But I think it is definitely for some people People, very very interesting now the question for me to you is would this be something you would be interested in and what you would like to see or do or use if it is please do let me know in the comment section below why would you think this is a perfect fit for you or give me some scenarios why you would want this processor so if you like this video hit that like button it actually makes a difference subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next video thank you very much guys for watching you are absolutely awesome keep going I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.